Good day, everyone. Assuming that you have already conceptualized your survey questionnaire and it looks good already, from the instruction to congruency of the items to your problems, can we now say that your survey questionnaire is valid? No, because in order to say that a questionnaire is valid, you must compute for the content validity index. So I will teach you how to do it. So here are the content validation procedures. Number one, prepare content validation form. Number two, select a review panel of experts. Number three, conduct content validation. Four, review domain and items. Five, provide score on each item. And number six, calculate content validity index. Here are the forms that you need to prepare and give to your experts. Number one is a letter. Here is a sample letter. Dear expert, of course you have to write there the name of your chosen expert. I am conducting a research about the knowledge, attitude, and mental health of junior high school students during the COVID-19 pandemic in Paranaque City. This survey contains three domains, knowledge, attitude, mental health, and 10 items in each domain for a total of 30 items. I need your expert judgment on the degree of relevance and degree of clarity of each item to the measured domains. Please be guided on the use of the following rating scales. Degree of relevance. 1. The item is not relevant to the measured domain. 2. The item is somewhat relevant to the measured domain. 3. The item is quite relevant to the measured domain. 4. The item is highly relevant to the measured domain. In terms of degree of clarity, 1. The item is not clear. 2. The item needs some revision. 3. The item is clear but needs some minor revision. 4. The item is very clear. Thank you. More power and God bless. Respectfully yours, your name. That is a sample letter. Another form to be prepared and to be given to your expert is a tabulation form. So here is an example of a tabulation form. Please indicate to what extent do you agree on the given statements. This is the instruction found in your survey questionnaire and your expert will write his comment here. Likert scale used. 1. Strongly disagree. 2. Disagree. 3. Uncertain. 4. Agree. 5. Strongly disagree. This is also the Likert scale that can be found in your survey questionnaire. And again, your expert, expert will write his comment here. And then under this column, you write all your items. So if you have 30 items, you write all your 30 items. So for this example, so I only write two, number one and number 10, assuming that there are 10 items. And then your assessment, kindly check the column which is appropriate for each item. So relevant, so we have one, two, three, four. Clarity, we have also one, two, three, four. Your expert will identify the degree of relevance and clarity of every item of your questionnaire. For example, item number one, wearing face mask is important to the spread of COVID-19. So your expert will ask, is this item relevant to the knowledge about COVID-19? If his judgment is item is highly relevant, your expert will check this column. In terms of clarity, the clarity of the sentence. So is the sentence very clear? So if your expert says that it is very clear, then your expert will check this column. Okay, and then for number 10, lockdown of barangays with high infection rate of COVID-19 can slow down transmission of the virus. Again, is this item relevant to the knowledge about COVID-19? If your expert identified it to be highly relevant, then 
he will check this column. Clarity of the sentence. Is the sentence clear? Okay, if your expert will check clear but need minor revision, so you will check this column for number three, and you will write the necessary comment here. That makes it clear but need minor revision. So what are the minor revisions that need to be done? So your expert will write the comment here. Next, after you have given that to your expert, you will retrieve them and calculate now the content validity index. The next thing that you will do is you have to make a table like this. Here are the, your items in the first column. If you have 10 items, you write all items 1 to 10. And then under relevance, so we have column for expert 1 and column for expert 2. Under expert 1, these are now the scores given by, by your expert on the degree of relevance to all your test items. And in this column under expert 2, here are now also the scores given by your experts in all your items in the degree of relevance. And then under expert in agreement, this is what you will work on. So expert in agreement refers to the number of experts who agreed relevant to the item. So these are the experts who rated three or four in the item. So let's take a look at item number one. Expert 1 gives a score of 3. Expert 2 gives a score of 4. So how many experts in agreement agreed that item number 1 is relevant? So since expert 1 give 3 and expert 2 give 4, so expert in agreement is 2, meaning both of them agreed that item number 1 is relevant. Let's take a look at item number 2. Expert 1 give a score of 4 and Expert 2 give a score of 4. So, Expert in Agreement bought the two experts, so 2, because we have only two experts. Take a look at item number 3. Expert 1 give a score of 1 and Expert 2 give a score of 3. So, how many experts are in agreement that item 3 is relevant? Only one expert. That's why we wrote here one. And who is that expert? Expert number three. Okay, so that is how you will compute for the expert in agreement. Next, we will calculate the item content validity index. And it is the expert in agreement divided by the number of experts. For example, the item content validity index for Item number one is two. So how many experts do we have? Two. So two divided by two, that is equal to one. So all scores here under expert in agreement, okay, with two numbers, automatically that is one because two divided by two is equal to one. Now let's take a look at item number three and number seven. So 1, expert in agreement, divided by 2, and that is equal to 0.5. That's why item 3 and number I, item 7, the item content validity index is 0.5. Next, we will compute for the universal agreement. And under universal agreement, we will only assign two scores, 1 or 0. So a score of 1 is assigned to the item that achieved 100% experts in agreement. And a score of 0 is assigned to the item that achieved not 100% experts in agreement. So for example, the universal average for item 3 is 0 because not all the experts agree to its relevance. As a matter of fact, only one expert agreed that item 3 is relevant. And then the rest, since the experts in agreement in all the items is 2, so uh, they will receive a universal agreement score of 1. Next, 
we will compute now for the score content validity index average based on item content validity index. Okay, this one, this color blue. So how are we going to do that? So we will just add the item content validity index in all the items. So since there are 10 items, so we will just add 1 plus 1 plus 0.5 plus 1 plus 1 plus 1 plus 0.5 plus 1 plus 1 plus 1 divided by the total number of items. So for in our example, we have 10 items. So divided by 10 and that will give us a score of 0 0.9. Therefore, our score content validity index average is equal to 0 0.9. Next, we will compute for the proportion relevance. And proportion relevance is the number item agreed by the expert as relevant and is given a score of 1 and a score of 0 is not relevant. For example, in domain knowledge, the PR for expert 1 is 0 0.8. So how did we get this value? So we will add or we will count the number of expert in agreement given by expert number one. So we will only count here three and four. So we will count one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. So eight, eight, uh, eight uh, agree over 10 items. So 8 divided by 10, and that will give us now a value of 0 0.8. Let us make it clear, we will not add the values here, but rather we will count the expert in agreement for every item. Okay, let's take a look for expert number 2. So the scores given by expert 2 are 4 and 3. So we will count how many items did expert to agree in all your test items so we will only count three and four values so one two three four five six seven eight nine ten so ten divided by ten because there are ten items is equal to one so the proportion relevance by expert two is one then in order to get the average so 0.8 plus 0.1 divided by 2 because we have only two experts is equal to 0 0.9. Therefore, the score content validity index average based on proportion relevance is equal to 0 0.9. Next, we will compute now for G score content validity index universal average. This one. Okay, universal average. So, we will just add all the values from number 1 to number 10 items. So 1 plus 1 plus 0 plus 1 plus 1 plus 1 plus 0 plus 1 plus 1 plus 1 divided by 10 because we have only 10 items is equal to 0 0.8. Therefore, the score content validity index universal agreement average is equal to 0 0.8. Okay, and what is now the implication of those cut of scores? So, according to Davis in 1992, if you have two experts, the acceptable content validity index value is 0 0.80. So, meaning we should get a score of 0 0.80 and above in order that we can say that our survey questionnaire is satisfactory. Okay, so let us now make a conclusion based on our computed values. So how shall we make now a conclusion? So based on the above calculation, we can conclude that the score content validity index average based on item content validity index, score content validity index average based on proportion relevance, and score content validity index universal agreement average meet satisfactory level. And thus, this scale of questionnaire has achieved 
satisfactory level of content validity. So meaning, our survey questionnaire is valid. 